right, last time we talked about sight and how we perceive light and colors. Uh, we discussed how our brains are hardwired to almost instantly detect foreground, background, things like that. Evolutionary survival instinct. We don't perceive everything we see. We only really perceive the things we look closely or directly at. So we're going to start with how we decode and in a few videos cover how we encode data into graphic form. Edward Tufte, graphical excellence is that which gives to the viewer the greatest number of ideas in the shortest time with the least ink in the smallest space. <laughs> no small order. All right, today's goal, understand the role of perception in visualization design. We're going to cover in the next few lectures these concepts of perception, pre-attentive processing, gestalt groupings, change blindness, signal detection, and change blindness. So this video is going to be about pre-attentive processing. Pre-attentive processing is what you notice before you're even consciously aware of it. How many threes? By changing the color and increasing contrast, we were able to completely change the task from one that required a lot of attention, focus, thinking, high cognitive load, to a task that was completely intuitive. Your brain saw the threes before your brain even remembered you were supposed to be counting them. They just appeared to you. That's the kind of um, pre-attentive leverage we want to pull. Pre-attentive processing, the ability of the low-level human visual system to effortlessly identify certain basic visual properties. And there are some tricks we can use. One of them is color. A simple example of a pre-attentive task is the detection of a red circle in a group of blue circles. That's your task. So which of these two images has a red circle? I'm sorry to be this dense, but the target object has a visual property, red, that the blue distractor objects don't have. And so it's really easy for us without even thinking that we know that the image on the right has a red dot. We're not literally not even thinking about it. It's just obvious, right? So just for the terminology sake, targets are, you know, like, for example, I'm telling you we're looking for a red circle, but if you're reading a graphic or a chart, there may be a legend um, from the title, you kind of know what you're looking for. So the idea is to use these, um, these tricks to help people pre-attentively notice them. So color is one tool we can use to increase the salience of the important data in our graphics. All right, which one of these graphics has a red circle in it? Shape is another visual property we can use to encode differences in data. Here, the visual system identifies the target through a difference in curvature, right? And I hope you notice that this property required a little more work than the color example. You actually had to scan through it, right? But it is still very obvious to see this, this one red circle sticking out. Okay, so here's kind of a, an, a graphic showing all the different ways we can change or offer a little difference to help make a particular item stand out. It's not just color and shape. We can use the orientation. We can use length. We can use curvature, um, density, uh, the intensity of the color. These are bizarro things, intersection, terminators, number estimation, closure, um, size, color was an obvious one, and 3D depth. We use this a lot, like in GIS in particular, when we're putting drop shadows on things. When you elevate this, this 3D depth is a way of making it look elevated off the page, and that's going to draw your attention to it more. Um, I just want to briefly mention the idea of that bias that comes in. I said when you're looking at a graph and you know you're looking for a particular thing, if you know you're looking for a red dot, then the red circle detectors are going to be blaring at you, right? If you're looking for slanted lines and you know you are because you just looked at the legend and that's the thing you're seeking, that's what's going to jump out at you and their signal gets amplified. This biasing though, 
this biasing in favor of what we're seeking or anticipating happens all the time. And what happens that we we end up perceiving information about the world biased according to what we are trying to do. And you may overlook other signals that are coming at you. So I don't really have a, a good reason for throwing that in right now, but <laughs> it just popped into my head. Okay, what happens if we combine a variety of visual properties? Which one of these, um, which one of these images has a red circle? So here we're dealing with red squares and blue circles, but there's a red circle in there. So I want you to realize that now that we've made this a little bit more complicated and we've um, created a combination of visual properties, we've lost the ability to leverage that pre-attention. The viewer has to categorically search through each one of these and compare and look for the red circle. It's a lot easier, it's a lot harder to spot in my humble opinion. Okay, here's your task. We're encoding using shape. We have two types of factories. What's the distribution? Or count, how many type ones are there? And now look. So here we're encoding with shape and color on the right. And I hope uh, you agree with me that the graphic on the right makes it much easier to pre-attentively evaluate the distribution or equally to count how many there are of each factory type. There's a lot higher cognitive load in the graphic on the left. Okay, perception into design principles. This, this uh, lecture is talking about pre-attention, which is noticing things before thinking about them. Okay. The brain is much better at detecting color differences than shape differences in that last example. So employing color utilizes what the brain is naturally good at. And that's what we're trying to do, transform perception into design principles.